What's good, y'all? It's Bull Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE stars whose egos ran wild. Now this is gonna be a very interesting one. We've heard the stories about wrestlers and their egos sometimes getting in the way of, of storylines or progressions of younger talent or older talent. Um, it's happened. It's 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 damn near part of the business. Egos do get involved. The question is being able to manage all these different egos and keep people in check. The one person that I know for a fact needs to be on this list is fucking Hulk Hogan. If he's not on the list, if he's damn near not number one on this list, I don't know how valid this list is, bro. Hulk Hogan has to be on this list. If there's anybody that had an ego in wrestling just not only in wwe in uh wcw as well it's fucking hulk hogan he needs to be on this list for this list to be valid i stand on that so we're gonna see if he's on this list appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one man to be successful in WWE, or in the wrestling business in general for that matter, a performer must have an ego. Well, to some extent anyway. Ego doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, but Facts. sometimes they can get out of control when yeah. a talent buys into their own hype, thinks they're above someone or above doing something, uh -huh. or starts acting in the interest of self-preservation to maintain their top tier status. Yep. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 WWE stars whose Egos ran wild. Oh, no Hulk Hogan in here. It's just too easy. Join oh, us. Oh, bro. Oh, oh. oh, this list ain't legit. You still, I know it's, that's the easy one to go with, but you had to put, he deserves to be in here. You can't say, oh, that's cold, bro. They ain't want to put him in here. I'm sure. I mean, yeah, it's easy, but come on, bro. Just because it's easy don't mean it's wrong either. Number 10, Triple H. It's been over two decades well? since the peak of Triple H's infamous reign of terror, where the cerebral assassin seemed to be perpetually well? in possession of either the WWE or World Heavyweight title belts and sledgehammered his way past everyone who got in his is this way. Often, got, literally, you, you can put him in here. Accusations that Hunter, as the son in law of Vince McMahon, used his clout to ensure that he was always in the prime position, regardless of whether there was a hot new act catching fire or fans were, you know, just sick to bloody death of seeing the game in the main event. Mm -hmm. And when you look at how strong he was booked and presented on WWE television, despite many believing it wasn't in the best interest of the company, including Pat Patterson, who temporarily quit WWE in late 2004, largely in protest at the seemingly never-ending push of Mr. Helmsley, mm -hmm. it's hard not to see merit in those claims. Add in how he put an early kibosh on the love triangle with himself, Stephanie, and Kurt Angle, because he didn't believe his badass character would get cheated on, WWE making sure he <laughs> didn't display weakness in video game still images, and countless other stories of politicking paints quite the picture, doesn't it? Number nine. Oh no, we've heard the rumors. He he definitely he definitely did some some politicking and ego definitely ran wild. I mean, we all know the infamous story with him and Booker T, and Booker T was supposed to the plans was to have him win at that WrestleMania. And the day of it, the day of the WrestleMania uh, Triple H went to Vince to change it up. That's the rumor. So, or the reports. So, take it with a grain of salt. But Triple H definitely had that type of pull backstage to say, ah, oh, it's not his time. Okay, fine, we can go ahead with it. Even though it may have been that person's time. So, Buff Bagwell. <laughs> The blink and you'll miss it WWE career seems generous of Buff Bagwell was a textbook case in how to lose friends, alienate people, and annoy the powers that be so badly that your chances of ever being rehired explode like a dodgy calf implant. Which we must never forget actually happened to Bagwell in 1995. One of WCW's biggest stars during the promotion's dying days, Buff mm. came over to WWE for the ill-fated invasion, very much believing that he 
was still the staff. <laughs> that, in his mind, meant that he shouldn't have to report to company-mandated training sessions for the WCW crew to help them get used to WWE rings and shake off any ring rust. Bagwell started a fight with Shane Helms at one of the practices, then continued to endear himself to his new employers by turning up late for house shows, refusing wow. to take any sort of blame for that disastrous Raw main event with Booker T, and the kicker of the whole thing, having his mother and former WCW tag team champion Judy call in sick on his behalf. Future endeavoured after a whopping eight days on what? the payroll, Bagwell to this day contends that the man in the mirror was not to blame for his own demise. Come on, bro. Number eight, son. When you have your mom calling in to say, hey, he can't make, bro, this, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? There were bro? women wrestlers, managers, and valets before her, but Tammy Sunny Sitch was WWE's first female in the diva mold. Not uh, bad for someone who was studying to be a plastic surgeon when she wow. decided to follow her boyfriend Chris Candido into the business. Sunny managed Candido in WWE as well as other acts like the Smoking Guns, Farouk, and the Legion of Doom, but she was a star in her own right and often stole the attention away from mm -hmm. the wrestlers she was seconding. AOL's most downloaded celebrity of 1996 was popular <laughs> all right and did AOL's most downloaded celebrity who remembers AO AOL damn they went back what year was that deal? AOL's most downloaded celebrity of 1996 Ooh. was popular, all right, and didn't she know it? According to just about everyone who was around her at the time, Sitch's opinion of herself got loftier and loftier with each passing week, and she became something of a nightmare to deal with backstage. Uh. This would have never happened if they didn't give her that best bun slammy, I swear. Her spiraling <laughs> ego problem wasn't helped by substance abuse issues and a mm -hmm. fierce jealousy of Sable, the new shiny uh. Uh -huh. would herself develop quite the ego as time went on. More of a prima donna than a body donna, Sonny's WWE exit was widely celebrated by colleagues who at one point decided to poop in her food as a means of humbling her. Number yeah. seven, CM Punk. I don't know about the pooping in the food, but you know, I, hey, we don't know how, how uh, unbearable she was backstage. That's still hella disgusting of course cm punk gotta be on this list what are we talking about <laughs> there is what? a school of thought that if a professional wrestler is to truly break into that elite upper tier they need to fully believe that they are the character they portray best so in the world when cm punk confidently <laughs> bellowed about being the best in the world it's very likely that he properly meant it rob van damme certainly got that impression from the straight edge superstar anyway and also recalled how punk would call locker room meetings during their time mm. working together on the rebooted ECW, despite the fact that Phil Brooks had only been on the main roster for a cup of Pepsi at that point. Mm -hmm. Punk has long been a man of principles and conviction, and has rarely, if ever, been willing to compromise his values for the business. Some see this as a virtue, while others see it as the so-called second city saint unjustly believing his own hype and taking himself too seriously. While yeah, Punk some people did definitely... over his fair share of wrestlers in WWE. Some people definitely feel that way. <laughs> Some people feel like he definitely buys into his own hype. Question is, do y'all feel that way? That's that's the real question. Let me know down below. We his list of enemies seems an awfully lot longer than his list of friends, and most mm -hmm. of that is down to an abrasive personality and an allegedly inflated opinion of himself. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like that, come fight me, Phil. I'm also winless in the UFC. <laughs> Bret Hart. Perhaps CM mm. Punk was taking cues from one of his idols. Bret Hart didn't just boast about being the best in the world, though. Oh no, according to the Hitman, he was the best there is, best there was, and the best there ever will be. And you know something? Many would agree with him. Mm -hmm. A perfectionist who was intensely protective of his character, Bret rubbed some people the wrong way with how he, in their opinion, seemed to put his own interests above the interests of others. Hart took great pride in portraying a hero, especially in his native Canada, which mm -hmm. led to, shall we say, a sticky situation at the 1997 Survivor Series. Yeah. Red's critics point to his refusal to drop the title to Shawn Michaels in Montreal as the perfect example of his selfishness and putting himself in front of the business. There's more than one side to that story, yeah. of course, but it's hard to deny that the excellence of execution is the president of his own fan club and knew just how special a talent he was. And, uh, of course, the, we've talked about this. This is one of the most infamous situations to ever happen in a wrestling business 
he had agreed with Vince. They had agreed that, um, you know, he was going to drop the title to uh, uh, going to drop the title the next night on Raw. He didn't want to drop it then. Um, but for whatever reason, Vince felt like he he was afraid he was going to really jump ship on him. And, it, you know, I don't know. It, it it's, it's one of those type of things where it's like Vince could have definitely trusted him because he didn't seem like a person to really just you know, jump ship with actually taking a championship like they've had previously, you know, issues with. So Vince was trying to make sure he, that didn't happen with the WWE championship. But it's like, I don't think that was necessary. I don't think to this day, I, I don't think Bret Hart would have just ran off to WCW without doing the job for Vince because they've done so much great business with each other. So I don't know, but that's how he felt. That's how Vince felt. And he called an audible without Brett even knowing and the rest is history so number five China don't treat me like a woman don't treat me like a man just treat me like I'm stone cold flipping Steve Austin complete with comparative main event positioning and pay those were the demands of China not uh -huh. long before her acrimonious WWE exit in 2001 uh -huh. the ninth wonder of the world had gone from degeneration X's silent bodyguard to a massive individual star winning the intercontinental title and gracing the cover of Playboy magazine during a whirlwind year there's no doubting that Joni Law his alter ego was a draw with a large fan base but she was not quite at the level of the biggest star in the industry mm -hmm. even if she herself believed that to be the case according to then talent relations head jim ross china demanded a seven-figure downside guarantee to re-sign with the company while also expressing her disinterest in wrestling the other women on the roster and a preference for being in storylines with headline male talent yeah, the uncomfortable uh... working environment stemming from triple h leaving her for stephanie mcmahon obviously didn't help matters yeah. but good old JR believed that China was asking much more than she was worth and ended negotiations Number yeah nah uh, and, and respect to China but nah that wasn't gonna happen it wouldn't it just nah yeah you could have the one offs maybe the money they probably could have worked on that too but you gotta call a spade a spade China was cool she was great for the biz but she wasn't the one you know, like she wasn't the biggest draw. She wasn't. Like, let's let's be honest. Women's wrestling wasn't even really that much of a draw that much back then either. Um, it's more of a draw now. People, you know, care to see it more now. But back then, no. Didn't matter. And if China was fighting men, she wasn't. People weren't saying, hey, I'm going to the show to see China. Not that many. Not that I know of. So correct me if I'm wrong. If you were one of those people that felt like, you know, you wanted to go to a wrestling show back then to see China. That's cool. But she wasn't the headliner, you know? So. For Sable. I alluded to it earlier when talking about Sunny, but sod it. Let's take a look at the woman <laughs> who basically took her place, shall we? Yeah. Rina Mero was famously hired after dropping the jaws of everyone with sway when she accompanied her husband, Mark, to his contract negotiation meeting. First acting as the valet of the wild man, Sable soon caught fire, went solo, and became one of the hottest acts in the promotion during the burgeoning Attitude Era. A merchandise machine and mm -hmm. rating sensation, Sable was made women's champion, scored the cover of Playboy magazine, and was one of the focal points of WWE TV for a time. And it all went to her head in spectacular fashion, leading to instances where Sable refused to drop the women's title, refused to take bumps in the few matches she would wrestle and Damn. ended up dictating the way she did drop the title on her way out the company suing wwe for 110 million dollars as she walked Ooh. through the door rena mero thought she had become the next pamela anderson in hollywood but mm -hmm. soon realized that most of her mystique was created and preserved by the wwe machine yeah number three shane mcmahon <laughs> if you are the son of the owner of a yeah he gotta be on this empire, list you might easily yep. assume it's your birthright to be able to do what you want when you want to do it backstage shane mcmahon put that theory to the test mm -hmm. at the 2022 to Royal Rumble when he showed up and used his influence to make himself look stronger than full-time talents by changing booking plans. Yep. His unprofessional and self-serving conduct infuriated the others involved with performing in and putting together the Rumble match 
match, including eventual match winner Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. He's top of my list of people I would try to avoid annoying, for what it's worth. Shano's antics got him exiled from WWE for over a year, but it wasn't the first time he's shown that, though his ego isn't quite as big as his father's, it's still suitably McMahon-sized. Just look at the way the man who was once crowned the best wrestler in yep. the world has been scripted to look competitive with Kurt Angle, yep. Olympic gold medalist, Kane, terrifying yep. horror movie villain, Randy Orton, menacing yep. psychopath, and a host of others, not to mention his penchant for performing spotlight-hogging stunts on major shows. Number like, two. I appreciate the spots and the stuff that he, you know, he's put his body through, even though he's not a traditional wrestler. But what he started doing with entering himself in that best in the world tournament and crowning himself that him as the SmackDown GM, it was cool at first. But then it just it became the Shane McMahon show. I was just like, yeah, this ain't it. This is not it. And he's been like that in certain situations and storylines where it's like, I don't think I don't think he should be the main focal point here, but you know, I still respect what he's done for the business for sure. Sean Michaels. I mean, how can a guy who thinks he's cute yep, and he has knows to be on he's this. sexy he has not to be on have a very high sure. opinion of himself? Shawn Michaels is undisputedly one of the absolute greatest in-ring performers of yep. all time. A Hall of Famer who, even on his worst day, could drag the most limited sports entertainer to their mm -hmm. best match ever. But he was also a self-admitted prick of the yep. highest order. <laughs> insisting he win titles he was never scheduled to. Telling the man who had just dropped the world title to him to get the flip out of the ring after a one-hour Iron Man match, deliberately mm -hmm. overselling as a protest to losing a pay-per-view main event. Seriously, do we even have a time limit on this video? <laughs> I can happily sit here all day and fire off every instance of the Heartbreak Kid making it all about the Heartbreak Kid. He may have mellowed a bit after his first retirement and finding Jesus and all that good stuff, but mm -hmm. in his first run, Michaels was every bit the tyrant you've heard about. He was an and asshole, bro. Number one, the ultimate warrior. I know he didn't put the real number one is Hulk Hogan. I don't care what nobody say, but it's it's cool. <laughs> Bodybuilder who saw the professional wrestling industry he definitely had a, way a to make huge good money ego and nothing too. Nothing else. The ultimate warrior was only ever in the business for himself. Possessing an incredible look and a keen understanding of crafting and marketing his persona, Jim mm -hmm. Helwig's creation caught on during WWE's cartoon era, and he became, at one point, the biggest star in the promotion not named Hulk oh, Hogan. Okay, yep. Helwig, meanwhile, believed he was at the level of the Hulkster and was so sure of it that he demanded, among other things, that he got paid Hogan money for all shows in a letter that he sent to Vince McMahon mm -hmm. in 91. That was not long before Vince McMahon fired him, the first of three times he would have yep. to let Warrior go within a five-year period. Outside of monetary demands, Helwig was also, according to many who worked with him, condescending, short-tempered, and flat-out rude, not just to the people who worked in the company, but ordinary civilians, too. Warrior was an attraction and made WWE a lot of money, no doubt, but he was never bigger than the company or the business that mm -hmm. made him a star, even if he felt that he was better than the guys working lower than him on the car. Mm -hmm. The list of people who speak glowingly of Jim Helwig as a person is sadly shorter than the majority of his matches. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the truth, harsh reality. He definitely belonged be, belonged on the list on this list. And Hulk Hogan still, I don't give a fuck. He definitely should have been one. I don't care if it is that is an easy pick. No, he should have been number one on this list. What? <laughs> What? It's fucking Hulk Hogan. What are we talking about, man? But comment down below. Let me know. Some other people you feel like should have been on this list where you know for a fact you've heard stories, seen the reports, you know. You know for a fact their egos were just ridiculously <laughs> enormous and uh, they let people know who they were and they believed into their own hype. Sometimes a little bit too much. Let me know if they weren't on this list. Or whatnot, but I appreciate all the love and support, guys. Sean on channel, road to 150k. And I'm seeing you on the speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.